stand and listen on Arnold's circus. What do you hear? S sounds. This program of Radio Arnold takes a look at the sounds of the circus. I'm Alfie and I grew up on the Boundary Street around Arnold Circus and today I'm going to talk to a number of people who've been involved with some unusual sounds around the circus and find out what people otherwise think of them. That's a bit of a song for a circus put together by Nina Polk and Tim Olden who worked together as summer. Marcus Coates is an artist who lives overlooking Arnold Circus and was part of the song group. Okay Marcus, why did you get involved with the friends group in making a song for the circus? Well, when I heard about it, it was, it was great for me because I just moved into the area. So it was a chance for me to meet other people and perhaps show off some of my uh, trombone playing skills and my singing skills. <laughs> So you did it just to show off a bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's always a bit of that in music, I think. Okay. But yeah, really it was about meeting people for me okay. and um, meeting people who are into music. So what did you have to do to make this all work and make it all happen? Well, maybe t t uh, Nina should talk about that. <laughs> Hello, my name's Nina Pope and I'm one of the two artists who put together the project. Um, we were invited as part of a bigger project called Agrofashionista to do something in Arnold Circus and Tim and I have always been really interested in the bandstand here and hence we wanted to do something with music so we came up with the idea of writing a song for the circus um, which would be played by people who live or work on the estate so we advertised for people and we held weekly rehearsals and we basically cut together the song from samples that we took during the different rehearsals and nearly all of the people who play um, on the mus in the music uh, live or work on the circus. So Nina and Marcus, why do you think Arnold Circus needs a song? Well, I, I think a song's a great way of celebrating. It's a great way of celebrating the area and it, it needs celebrating because it's so fantastic here. I think it's a good way of celebrating a place but I also think it's quite a good way of opening up dialogue or discussion around what a place is like and who has a stake in that place. And it's an interesting way through music to find people from different communities and try and get them to work together in some way. And it wasn't an entirely smooth process, and I think that's partly why the music has turned out to be quite interesting. OK. If the bandstand could speak, do you think you'd enjoy the song you've made? I think so, yeah. A couple of times we actually played up there when we were practising, and that was a really nice experience. It felt quite nice to be playing out in the open, in the, in the middle of the circus. <laughs> Nina, Marcus, could you kindly tell me who was involved in making this music and what kind of instruments were used? Okay, well one of the sort of strong contenders in the band was a guy called Jan who at that time lived in the squat on Arnold Circus and he's an amazing musician, he plays the sitar on the track, he also plays the... Um, it's not an accordion, what's the Melodium. name? Melodion. Melodion yeah. on it, which is, forms a rhythm behind it. And Can you describe what Melodion is? Because I don't know what that is. It's a bit like an accordion, isn't it? Yeah, um, it's like a keyboard that you squeeze and it compresses air. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. one of them. Ones. Really yeah. lovely sound. Yeah. He knows a lot of folk songs which he can play with it. And then he also built us an instrument. Yeah, this bizarre instrument. It was like a double bass, but it was out, he made it out of a bucket, a piece of rope and an old broom handle. But it was really good. It was really, really excellent. That sounds really interesting. Mm. And then there's a guy called Pete who plays the guitar on the track. He's great. He's lived in the circus for a long time. 
And then uh, there was Seamus, who'd be described as our lyricist, I think. <laughs> yeah, he he uh, he brought his own unique sort of brand of um, almost spoken poetry, singing poetry. It was really beautiful. This London of mine, from Empire Born. What a mix. Rich it is. Sailors and tailors, weavers and hawkers, from all corners coming. The Jago is full from jugglers and We had a lot of discussions between us about how we would write the lyrics for the song, which was probably the most interesting part of the project. of skin, from docks to dockers, to tales of wonder, from tavern to brothel, lodgings all, round the criminal class, church to grave, a Londoner. So, if you want to hear this lovely song, then go to my space page, www.myspace.com forward slash song for a circus. instead of squalor, London brick, and all the builders and chippies and plumbers and architects. First on the list, place to live. The Jago gone and a new bandstand. Boundary Estate, already famous, from unique stock, just like us, from cabbies to carers, cooks and cleaners, offenders and defenders, to brokers and bankers, to property prices and squatters, all living together, this London of mine. You might think the sound of vinyl circus is all around us, but I've got a surprise for you. I'm talking to Thor and Simon. So Thor and Simon, what are your plans for the bandstand? Um, we are going to explore the bandstand, the ground of the mound under the bandstand sonically via, with, uh, with microphones, and we're going to play it through a big bass bin in the centre of the, in the, center of the uh, bandstand. <laughs> Basically, the, this bandstand space, we're... we're looking at what kind of sounds and what kind of vibrations that are going on within this bandstand as a mound uh, and seeing how we can turn, take that from the vibrations that you can't hear at all and transpose those up into levels which you can actually sonically hear it. So can you give us a slight example of what are the sounds that <laughs> we might be hearing? Well that's, we're looking forward to hearing that ourselves yeah, that's, that's, actually. That's, that's, that's <laughs> the surprise that's coming. Um, it, I mean, it, you know, it, it, you're unlikely to hear voices and groans and things, but you will hear, <laughs> but, but you never know. Um, but it's it's more, it's you know, it'll be in the kind of noise and blips and reverberations, and the kind of sounds that you you'll hear here will, will be basically filtered through the, the soil. But what we're actually looking at is, is it's almost uh, it goes down into such low vibrations that it's seismic uh, vibrations. Which, which are the kind of vibrations that when people are listening for earthquakes and things like that, they're listening to those kind of vibrations. Um, so we're looking right down at that kind of level, the things that vibrate in the sound, as opposed to the sounds that are in the vibrating air. So is this what you both do on a full-time basis, listen to the ground? <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. It's one of, the, one of the more interesting things that we, yeah. we do with projects, projects like this. Measures an organisation which works with artists uh, in unusual spaces and to create site-specific artworks to uh, yeah, and make a piece of work for here. Yeah. So how would you convince somebody like off the street like myself that thought this was not really happening, like somebody listening to a mould, that this is actually something interesting? Um, well, hopefully some s we're creating some literature which, the, which people can read to get some more kind of background on what's going on. Um, but hopefully it's, uh, word will spread that you can yeah. come to the bandstand and the idea is, you know, a bandstand like this, when you look at it today, it doesn't really function for what it was built for. There's not very many bands in there. There's not, people are not necessarily using it as it was designed originally for. So it now it's, it's kind of lost some of its function. But So we're looking at different ways that you can create new functions for this bandstand. So that hopefully people will be attracted to the idea of this is, this is how a bandstand can work in a different way. It can create a kind of an ear on the earth. So like. how many hours are you thinking of recording for? Uh, initially, there's two stages to this project. What we're doing now is just really it's kind of a, uh, a kind of prototype launch event of, of just uh, it's the beginning of a long longer project which will run over the course of a year. A um, year. Yeah, which will be looking in much more in depth about what what we can find here. And one last question before we finish off. Yeah. How much do you think it's going to cost you for all this? Uh, a lot <laughs> of blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. 
in the initial stage and then yeah. uh, later on hopefully getting more more kind of a science art uh, sort of research fund to, also to, to work on. working with the Friends of Arnold Circus as well is really mm-hmm. important to this project and then it's which is why we approach the theme, yeah. the central point of wanting to work within the community and base the project within the community of the Boundary Estate. So yeah, thanks yeah. for that. Th- thanks for your support. <laughs> yeah, that's not a problem. We'd like to thank you for your time and <laughs> effort. Yeah. I wonder what people on Arnold Circus would think of that.